Chapter 11, Flora. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock. Report number 87. Testimony from randomly selected citizen, Ms. Reality Meyer. Raise the tax rates. The turnover of cars needs to go back up. Bring back the gridlock we used to know before the mid-levels swallowed our streets. So many family businesses were ruined to make way for these concrete monstrosities towering over the cars. It was dawn, but Flora could only tell that from her watch. With her mech maneuvers volume one that her mother gave her in her arms, she waited for the simulator arcade to open. It was time to train. The purple LED lights from Mac Attack's arcade radiated into the trunks as partygoers from the night before strolled through the cars, likely on their way to eking out another hour of party somewhere. While she waited for the arcade to open, she strolled through nearby cars in search of home inspiration. The people of Gridlock were incredibly creative. Her recent favorite modification included hammocks strung between trucks. Flora? An elderly man whispered to her from the arcade. Is that you? Hey, Mac. She answered, moving back towards the arcade. Mac frowned. Flora knew why. Yes, I don't have access to a training mech yet. I'm here to train on the simulators. Flora, you entered without having access to a training mech? Mac, have you seen my high scores on the simulator? Remember why Armin won? He said he could practice more adept maneuvers in virtual reality because there was less risk. She knew it was going to be an uphill battle, but she also believed that simulator training was sufficient. But Flora, he still had a training mech. Flora shrugged. I will get one. I'm planning to. Are you going to let me train or not? Flora, I can't possibly charge a championship runner to train here, especially considering how many times you've been here. In fact, listen, have you had breakfast already? If not, go get some and I'll move one of the simulators into a special room for you. How's that? It took Flora by surprise, not because Mac was offering it, but because it's been a while since someone asked to help before they did it. That, that is so kind. Thank you so much, Mac. Flora bowed out towards a nearby food spot. It wasn't entirely breakfast, but more so late night comfort food for techno souls oozing out of the nearby thumping and strobing dungeons. She saw some of them spilling out of a nearby trunk, along with the music emanating from below. They tipped the canary kid and walked towards the food spot where Flora was eating a hot dog. The party goers, two men, dilated pupils and all, noticed her. Hey, whoa, aren't you that girl? The man asked. The other man, hanging on to the other's hips, noticed it too. Yes, Flora, Flora Kygo, championship runner. Oh shit, you're right, the first man said as his eyes tried to figure out where to focus. Flora pushed through a smile of acknowledgement with a hot dog in her mouth. We're rooting for you, the first man slurred. Flora frowned as she swallowed. Really? The second man separated like Velcro from the first man as he paid for his hot dog. Yes, you are a trunk rat like us. Well, yes, I guess, Flora answered. The second man handed the hot dog to the first man as he moved towards Flora. High five! he said, moving into an arcing motion with his arm as he also deftly kept the hot dog in his other hand from succumbing to gravity. Flora found the man's palm and accepted the high five. They walked away hip by hip with a swagger still pulsing from the club they just came from. Flora ate the rest of her hot dog and stood in front of the arcade. It was a strange feeling to be recognized, never mind being supported. She didn't know these people and they supported her. It felt odd. She peered back into the arcade. A year ago, it was filled with kids playing virtual mechs, wearing Armin's face on their shirts. Now it was empty, with the shimmering lights inviting her in. After a few minutes of anticipation, Mac, whom she has known since she was a child, opened the door. In a back room was the simulator, just for her, set up alongside a desk and other refreshments. Is this a new simulator? Well, sort of. I've been keeping this one for the eventual future that the ones in the store would need to be replaced. It's basically brand new. Flora smiled and thanked him. Have at it, Max said as he closed the door. Flora moved closer to the simulator. She pulled up the high scores and saw that it was empty. Empty with possibility. She took out her father's manual, Mech Maneuvers Volume 1, 
and placed it next to her on the desk. She slowly stepped into the machine, plugging in her feet and arms. She donned her VR helmet and saw the expanse of a broken desert in front of her. This virtual world was a replica of gridlock. The city, the internal dome, the wastelands, and then finally, the anomaly. There was heated debate when the internal dome was first proposed. It was prohibitively expensive to protect everyone and cover the entire 100-kilometer radius to the anomaly. Thus, the city had to unfortunately choose whom to exclude. The impasse was eventually resolved by offering financial remuneration to those who lived outside the proposed radius. Over time, however, economic activity moved away from the outside edges and into the city under the dome. It was safer and cheaper. What was left was a wasteland of rubble, abandoned buildings, and a desert. A stretch of 100 meters just outside the dome was cleared of rubble to serve as a track for the Hope Runner Championships. The only interruption in that lane of desert outside the dome was the cars in the gridlock stretching all the way to the anomaly. Flora had never set foot outside the dome in real life, but in virtual reality, it felt like home. Peace fell over her as dunes and abandoned buildings stretched away from the virtual dome behind her. She smiled and took a deep breath. A run around the dome with nine AI competitors would be a nice warm-up. She closed her eyes as the starting gun counted down. Three, two, one, and off her competitors went. Besides giving them a head start, it allowed Flora to appreciate the scenery. The wasteland stretching away to one side and the dome and the city of gridlock on the other. She took another deep breath and started running. Quickly, she caught up with the runners without breaking a sweat. They ran up and down the dunes next to the city as she jumped and danced across. Like clockwork, she took advantage of some of the simulator's glitches by canceling a jump and then clipping through the dunes. If the other runners were real, they would see her phase through the sand. She smiled as the AI didn't quite grasp what the hell was happening. She knew it tripped them up and used it as an opportunity to ram them, mechs tumbling into the dunes. With her usual ease, she edged to the front of the pack, leading with half a lap. The finish line raced closer as the fake crowds cheered for her. She usually laughed at that because there's no way the crowd's voices could be heard through the city's dome and through the mech itself. It was even funnier when it usually died down as she stopped in front of the finish line. She turned around and faced the AI runners coming towards her. She learned to do this, to extend the experience as much as her money allowed her to. She sat down and watched the runners race across the finish line beside her. She knew she had won, but the podium didn't matter. This was where she felt free. It was all fake anyway. After the AI ran across the finish line, the simulation waited for Flora to finish. Instead of walking over the line and running again, she ventured away from the tracks and into the wasteland. Initially, she did this out of curiosity, a desire to witness the boundaries of the game world. Now, it was a part of her usual warm-up. A few minutes deeper into the expanse, past abandoned buildings, dunes, and plains, the edge of the simulated reality appeared. All she could see was a low-resolution background that represented the anomaly and the unknown. She sat and waited until the simulation sunset, a two-dimensional orange disc that slid down the horizon. Extending her hand and touching the sun brought a smile to her face. After it set, she ran back to the finish line and playfully fell over it to raucous simulated applause. She ran a few times more, practicing some maneuvers from the manual. As much as she enjoyed it, it would not be enough without a training mech. Mac was right. That was her next step, researching mech sponsors and researching the other runners for weaknesses. The AI runners were predictable. Humans were not. As Flora stepped outside the arcade, she glanced at her watch in the darkness. The sun was likely setting. She started into a trot home when she tripped over a person sitting in front of the arcade. Dusting herself off, a familiar voice shouted at her, Flora! Palma? What the hell? What are you doing here? 